class is in session. Hey guys, welcome to Unlearn 16. Class is in session. Today I have Lou, my tattoo artist. You guys probably know and love her from all the work she's done all over my body, but we are also very good friends and we both have a very strong passion for sport, for baseball, and specifically for women in sport. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to tackle some of these big issues and I, we're hopefully come to some conclusions. I don't know if we can. Maybe somebody will listen to it and change the world because of what we say. Okay. Do you think that's a big expectation for the podcast? Changing the world? No. No, me neither. Okay. No, I like it. I'm putting it out there. What's, what's the word? When you, when you manifest something? Yeah. That's what I'm doing. We're willing it. We're willing it into existence. All right, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you start the conversation. Okay. Let's um, start with baseball. Well, we yeah. We both play. Well, we both play. We're both... I would say mildly obsessed with it. I put on my Boston jersey yeah. shirt, not because I don't love the Jays and for all the Yankees fans like booing me right now, but... We don't need to worry about Yankee fans. Lou... Yeah, that's okay. Lou's a solid Boston fan. So, solid. You know, Absolutely. I wore my hat, I put on my shirt. I thought it was appropriate. Well, yeah. Joanna and I both grew up playing baseball, but we have very different mm -hmm. versions of growing up with baseball. And I... I started to think about that yeah. um, and how, how different they were because I was a young girl um, wanting to play the sport and mm -hmm. I got pushed to softball, which most of us get thrown into. But Joe played a lot of hardball growing hardball up, which is not something that you hear about so often. Why don't you yeah. tell your story? Why don't you sort of give your experience as a kid yeah. and then I'll give mine and then we'll go into... Yeah. Yeah. So six years old, wanting a baseball glove. Why that came into my head, no idea. My parents went to Buffalo for, on a trip, got me a, my first Ricky, Ricky Henderson. It's like a uh, leather, beautiful Ricky glove. Henderson. But in my head, I wanted to play baseball, like right. the, like the men on TV. TV. Yeah. yeah, hardball. Um, T-ball started out, absolutely. You know, you're like, okay, I get the vibe of this. Then three pitch, then five pitch, both boys and girls leagues. And then after that, with my heart so set on playing hardball, I was introduced to fast pitch right. or softball. What age is that then for you? What age was that? That was like 12 or 12, I would say, 11 12. or 12. So you're hitting puberty. That's when things start to divide. Right. That's when the leagues really start to separate boys mm -hmm. and girls with baseball. Um, but there were and everybody's no... playing. You, you're playing with a hardball because my my experience. For you, you're playing with a hardball right up to 12. No. No, oh, no, no. so when did you three get pitch, the... five pitch? Is that was, softball? Was also a softball, oh. but just where the pit, where the coach yeah, yeah, is pitching yeah. to you or pitching machine. Um, but we never played with a hard ball, and maybe it was like um, a city thing where I was from. Like I grew up in yeah, Vaughan. Yeah, yeah. Um, where did you grow up? Well, I learned how to play base baseball in Mansfield, which is like okay. outside of Barrie. It's a small town in northern Ontario, which is why I had a very different lived experience there and then I moved to Oshawa and then I moved to Whitby right so you you keep going and I'll I'll yeah so so hardball was never introduced as an option to me mm -hmm. and I started to really well I was asked by a, a family member like why are there no hardball leagues for girls right and I was like I don't know and he said to me he goes is baseball sexist yeah and I uh, like uh, like a knife went through my heart. I was like, there right. is no way that the sport oh, I that I have committed my entire life to is sexist. Get yeah. that shit out of here. Like, right, absolutely right, right. not. And then the more I sat with it and kind of tried to find reasons as to why this is not offered for young women, it ex started to expose itself, right. which was super, super eye-opening and mm -hmm. a little bit disheartening just because I love it so much. But it's true, Joe. Why is there no hardball? Well, here's, for women. And here's the weird part. So when I grew up, um, I grew up in this small town. And when we played, we didn't even do, I didn't even, I don't even remember doing t-ball. Okay. We all, I, we must have. I just don't have any memory of that. But we started, so in squirt, I must have been seven. And, and that was squirt. And I remember we had Yankee uniforms. Don't Terrible. judge. But it was very cute. Pinstripes. Um, I played with, I, my very first baseball team, I played with Jeremy Tiger. Who is the drummer ah, for Our Lady Peace? Peace. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah. yeah. We still chat. He actually has a picture of us in his house that he just sent me on on Twitter not too long ago. Anyway, so I grew up playing baseball, and and it was all, the girls and the guys played, and I was a young kid. So before uh, at twelve years old, I I that's when I moved to Oshawa. Mm -hmm. So I played, 
and I was I was good. I was good enough to play up, so I would play up a level. I was good enough in tournaments where where if I was going to play up, coaches would say, well, she can play, but she has to play the outfield. We don't want her in the infield. Right. Sure, she can play up. Right. So I was good, and I got a lot of attention because of it. And then we moved to Oshawa. And Oshawa, again, for those people who don't, don't know Toronto, it's, it's kind of like a suburb of Toronto, sort of small town, GM community, uh, built on that kind of labor force. And I started playing in Oshawa. I started playing just house league, but I was good. Mm-hmm. And eventually I tried out for the Legionnaires, which is like, a, in a, I guess, a, an elite team or a, a rep team kind of thing. And I tried out for this team in grade seven. And in grade seven, I was a catcher in grade seven. I tried out, tried out, tried out. I made it all the way to the end. And the coach, and my mom and I talk about it to this day, the coach says to my mom, she's great. She's great. I should have her on the team. But, should yeah but I don't have a female coach how is she gonna travel with the boys who is she what room is she gonna share right. and where is she gonna get changed and where where's all that gonna happen because there's nothing facilitated for that right. and in that time what year would that have been I don't know the late 80s mm-hmm. my mom's response is I get it what do you yeah I get it well, what are you gonna what, what are you gonna do down on that and fight against it well yeah I mean it should today could you imagine somebody saying that they'd make up another reason but today there'd be a big big issue about that I was like you're right I can't travel with the team right. I can't like I have to work and anyways and so I didn't play and I kind of got over it because as a kid it's just kind of like okay I didn't think about it so much I, I do now and then I moved to Whitby and when I moved to Whitby which is a town over Whitby's a little more pretentious and I just went to play house league yeah nothing fancy about it a lot of guys couldn't hit a ball to save their life but the whippy board or whatever community of baseball you know individuals said oh, she can't she got to go play softball and my mom was like no she doesn't why does she have to play softball she's perfectly capable and and at that point we had a bit of a back and forth because at that point they were asking me to change my sport Right. Because well, baseball and softball, softball are different. Softball is essentially like a watered-down version of baseball where it, it, it was created to pretty much play indoors during the winter yes. season. So, uh, and then when basketball came around in the spring, it was pushed back outside. Right. But, but that's pretty much how it was created. But With a mush ball with on a, the inside. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. in your situation, and there's like a rule with this right now with Little oh, yeah. League, is that girls, girls can play mm-hmm. Little League, but if there's another league for them, then they're not allowed to... To play, right? Is that so still the rule? So, yeah, so I, I had like to, that. they said, listen, she can't play. And I literally had to go before them and say, I'll try out. Nobody tries out for house league. You just freaking play. Right. I'll try out. If you think I'm not good enough, I won't play. It's not that you're not good enough. It's the fact that you're just, it's it's literally a boy-girl thing. Baseball and is. And I, I played. Baseball but. is the all-American sport for for men. Yeah. And I mean, even the guy Spalding who created baseball in like the late 1800s, he, I read that he was creating this league to pretty much like class up the gentlemen, right? And that's how you get the New York Yankees, right? With all of their like rules, nonsense and, rules yeah, yeah, of yeah. like clean shaven, like mm-hmm. no last name on the back because you're a collective. So it was this this class system essentially right. to like to to pretty much like spiff up the gentlemen. But women were legitimately like MLB was not allowed to sign a woman. Like there was like a, a a yeah. rule that was created in the 50s that said women cannot play. Which makes no sense because that would have been post, like everybody seen the movie League of Their Own, that movie would have been after, I mean, sorry, that law right. or whatever would have been after. Because baseball got, got hot there for a minute when women were, the, the movie when League of Their Own playing. was a legit thing. That was a thing. real thing. That was a real thing. Guys were out uh, fighting the war and women's league stepped mm-hmm. in very much like... Um, like the Negro ba- Baseball League, mm-hmm. where they it was getting big, and there's beautiful talent in both yeah. of the leagues, and then it was like kibosh, like yeah. it was not, it was declared actually that baseball was a contact sport. Yes, I read that it was and a that, contact sport. Yeah, that's why women yeah. can't play. Right, because if they get hit in the chest, oh. uh, it was actually a cause of what they said. That's how breast cancer developed. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm like, is baseball sexist? And they I'm like, oh my God, it is. Maybe it is. it is. And I'm not, Joe, I am not, I'm not asking for women to play in the majors with like my trout and like, like these massive well, right. 200. If they can play, then but, play. But then part of me is like, 
baseball is not exactly a sport that's based off of like this like greek god physique like look at the baseball players that play baseball <laughs> dude like they look like couch Guys, some of them look they, like couch potatoes i love the blue jays and i love the catcher Come his on. his last name is out of my head right now um i forgot his last name oh too. what's his last name kent some anyways but the dude look like He's a big guy. He's not. He's a big guy. And it's and, and and it's not to say that like every pitch that's coming in is a ninety nine mile an hour uh, fastball from Chapman. Like I'm talking knuckleball sliders. Yeah. We have balls coming in at around like 60, 70 miles yeah. an hour. So it's not really it's not really hitting a, a pitch that's the problem. But I will say, Joe, when I played indoor hardball with a guy's team actually a few years yeah. ago. This ball came back at me so hard that I couldn't. One hundred percent. I just wasn't trained with a, a hardball. No, man. there's no. I mean, and and so when I play, so when I played, yeah. I played right up into sixteen years old, and and I got to a point where I was pitching still around yeah. fifteen years old, and I realized the guys were getting stronger, right? Yeah. So when I pitched, I would last five innings, at max. Because every single pitch I threw had to be everything yes. I had. Yeah, for sure. Everything I had. And by the fifth inning, You're done. Um, I wouldn't be able to, because whatever damage I'd done to my shoulder, whatever inflammation, holding the ball was right. near impossible because I couldn't feel it anymore. Right. Because I'd done that so much. So there comes a point where, you know, there was this seeming separation, but that's also from a kid and an individual who never went to the gym, mm -hmm. who never lifted weights who never, I never did anything physical, and hitting a ball as opposed to throwing a ball is totally different. It's hand-eye coordination. It's, it's like, it's having that good eye. It's having that good patience. It's a different skill set. And I think when you all of a sudden were up against the guys and watching something coming overhand, which by the way is completely different, because when I see an underhand pitch now, I'm like, what the hell is that? It's a completely different totally skill. Totally different. One's coming in from up top, and one's coming in from from down low, right? Totally different. Because so I've not, seen it's not that at all. It's a not, lot of majors can't yeah. hit a, you, sixty feet out. A lot of majors can't hit a windmill shot either. But the rules are different with softball, like entirely coming down to like how close the mound is mm -hmm. to the plate. Sixty feet, right? Sixty feet are the right. base length or the base uh, the bases from one yeah. another, not instead of ninety. Um, there's no lead offs off of um, off of off bases. bases. Um, it's just a different game. But why? Why have we watered it down and then funneled women into this direction? And I really, I really can't wrap my head around it. I think I, I can. I think you well, can. But, you well, don't want to. Well, besides demand, right? Like, I mean, no, there I is, don't think it's about demand. There are leagues, like mm. for women in Japan, and like the Canada yeah, has some Reg like World yeah, yeah, Cup yeah. thing that no one shows up to, and no one gives a shit because all like, the women are playing another baseball, another form of baseball. No one cares about mm -hmm. women's sports, right? But okay, so let's let's forget about the end result for a minute, because okay. everybody that talks about women's sports always says, look. The women's NBA or WNBA doesn't have the same draw. Women's tennis doesn't have the same... I think women's tennis does. Women's soccer doesn't have the same draw. So that's why they're all relegated to the back and beyond, sure. right? But here's my... This is the more interesting question. Is about... We have seen either the creation of a sport or the funneling of women into it. Because softball wasn't originally created for women. But the funneling of women into a specific sport for a specific reason... And I think it's probably one of the most um, subversive ways to indoctrinate and ensure uh, subordination and oppression. It's one of those ways where we say, we're going to give this to them, like Title IX in the United States. 1972 mm -hmm. was when it was passed in college for, for all college athletes that women... To try it for men's sports unless there was a a, right. a team for women mm -hmm. so when women would go, you know so they created softball and it was at everywhere so they had to play that but it's not just having to play that but we changed the sport so you have to play that sport it's close enough that it's parallel and it's legal but it's different enough and it seems less than in a lot of ways enough to keep women in their place also, too, is it like it was based on what you're saying? Is softball simply like a pacifier for us? It's uh, just 100%. like percent. Shut up, play. Because yeah. I mean, what am I actually gonna do 
as a woman leaving high school with softball. The only thing I have open are scholarships. Yep. There are no scholarships for right. women in hardball, period. Mm -hmm. There's no Olympic sport for that. So where do I go after high school? Nowhere. Where do I go after grade eight? Yeah. That's all it is. And then, and, and it's money. Like I would love to go to university and have my, uh, my education paid for. Right. There's no other promise for me. So what else am I doing? It, but it's like, it... And they make the the bases closer. What? Because we can't run ninety feet. I don't know. Women can't run ninety feet. The all ball of a sudden? and the balls. The balls way bigger. Why is bigger? the ball bigger? It's just a, Look yes. at the size of yeah. my hand. The for the love bigger. of God, why make something bigger for my hand? My well, the hand's barrel. Small. The barrel of the bat is way larger too. So it's uh, longer. If, uh, well, longer, but also like it's it's aluminum. Like we're not using wooden bats here, so it's a quicker sport. But it, it doesn't make any. It, again, it's mm. all about. So if we we transfer that logic and we talk about ringette. Don't even get me started on ringette. Tell me about ringette. Like what have you have you ever seen people play? I, nobody plays bit. anymore because girls are playing yeah. hockey now. Yeah. So I'm I'm dating myself a little bit, but when I was a kid, boys played hockey, girls played ringette. So you got this little round like tube. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, you know, those things you give your kids that you throw on top of the thing and you, you have the colors matching up. It's like just tiny little ring and then you have a stick with a point on it. First of all, who, who thought that was less dangerous than having a hockey yeah, it's stick? Yeah, like lawn darts. Yeah, why don't you just <laughs> impale people while they're playing hockey? And you're supposed to flick it rather than hit it like a slap shot. And I'm just like, look, <laughs> divide the kids, fine. We can talk about whether women and men should be playing on the same team or not. That's sure. a different conversation. But why but can't you just do hockey, hockey? Why can't you just do hockey, hockey? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why? Well, all the Olympic sports are basketball, basketball, soccer, soccer, softball. Softball's not even really an or baseball is not really an Olympic sport at all. No, I think they took it out. Right? Yeah. It was for a minute. But why? What? And even if they're not going to take it out, why an entirely different game? You have that, you have, did you, in high school, did you ever play, um, I'm laughing, and, and men do play this, so I'm, we're talking from a very American-Canadian perspective right. here, yeah. field hockey. No. So when I was in high school, girls played field hockey in skirts. Yeah. You know, I never thought about this stuff before. Why? But we need to be reminded that they're female. Skirts. But you had to have shorts underneath it, kind of, like, because you're going to bend. Oh, and, and they put them in skirts and then made them bend over because the stick is only this high. Right. I really didn't think about, like, prior to, like, becoming an adult, how much um, we sexualize everything. Like, I really just thought that sports were sports and, like, we're playing to win and right. that's it. And it's clean and that's it. It's not. Mm -hmm. You saw what just happened mm -hmm. in this this uh, Olympics with the volleyball team yeah. or some team or whatever. They were wearing... Norway? Was it Norway? No, no, no. I think it was... Yeah. They were wearing Speedo, like, little bathing suits well, they, to play. Yeah, they decided to wear shorts and they got sued or they got fined by their actual team. It wasn't even the Olympics, but they got fined because they were supposed to wear Speedo. Right. But bathing why? suit but bump. why? Well, the, the, the answer is clear. You know what's weird about that, though? Women swimmers, it's not consistent. That's the weird part about all this. So you have soccer, soccer, basketball, basketball. And then, and then you have these other sports that have been really utilized to differentiate and to sexualize and to, um, you know, keep in whatever gendered ideals we want to keep them in. And I almost feel like they serve to devalue the ones where we're actually playing basketball, basketball, hmm. soccer, soccer, where these women are getting paid next to nothing in comparison to the men. Now, having said all of that, mm. I don't think, because a lot of people are like, women's soccer players should be getting paid to the same to the guys' soccer players or basketball. We understand that that's a functionality of supply and demand. Right. But there's so many other things that go into that supply and demand, right? Like when I was a kid, hockey just started. And I remember wanting to play. My mom's like, no, because you have to, the only ice time for girls was 5 a.m. Right off the bat? Well, that was it. Because the guys had all the other ice times, right? And I was like, I'm not, play something else, Joe. Like, I'm not getting up then. And I was like, fine. I didn't really, it wasn't like an urge. But to know that that was our only ice time, to know the coach we got or the coach that they had had never played hockey before, to know that the training they got was minuscule in comparison. And then people have the audacity to say, well, look at the outcome. 
guys are just better than girls. Well, right. of course they are. Yeah. Look at that. Right? It's the illusion of choice that you're there being you given. And I find that that happens a lot. It's mm-hmm. like, hey, you could do this, but it's best that you just do this. Yeah. You know? And we're like, we don't know better. I, I didn't know. know better. Oh, sorry. I didn't know better at 11. Where it's like, wait a minute, I you should ask play. more questions. And why doesn't that coach want to take me? And why don't we have another mm-hmm. female coach? You're just taught to not press the mark. Like, don't bother. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we, we think it's go- it's not gone. We think it's getting better. And, and later I am going to have uh, a young baseball player. I'm not going to name her right now only because I want to make sure she's comfortable with it. A young baseball player who's amazing in Durham, fantastic hardball player. Yeah, I love that. And she's still facing the same stuff time and time and time again that I faced 30 years ago. Isn't that crazy? It's just something we come to so accept. I know who you're talking about. She's so yes. good. We accept it. The media accepts it. Everybody accepts it because they're just like, well, just go play. Just go play that sport over there or just go play that over there. Meanwhile, it doesn't have the same funding. It doesn't have the same notoriety. It has no place for those girls to go or to progress with it. So what are they supposed to do with it? It's a dead end. Absolutely. So what do we, so, so you have sports like all of these sports that we've mentioned. So Mm -hmm. what do we do? How does that funk? So there's a lot of girls right now sitting at home going, I love softball. I'm going to play softball to the day I die. I'm fantastic at it. I got a full ride to wherever. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I'm not trying to devalue that. Um, but where do we go now when we see it as such a, a subversive form of discrimination? What do we do? I don't know, Joanna. What do we do? <laughs> what do well, 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 even even discussing this and trying to read about it, there's no, no one, but why is no one talking about it? And it's nothing not for lack but, of interest, yeah. Joe. You know that. I mean, a, I could probably get together mm-hmm. like a team of 40 women who play baseball yeah. on a level that's pretty intense. And don't tell me that none of them wish they could play in a big league stadium. Not with men, yeah. but... With like professionally stitched shirts, stirrups, yeah. long pants. Why am I wearing shorts if I'm sliding? Like, what? Our shorts were were <laughs> they weren't skirts, but they were not. They were not. They were not real short. They were not they, pants. Why are we wearing shorts to play baseball I, but that, at all? But that's what I'm saying. You lose you half have, your leg because you have guys playing hardball in 90 degree weather, and what are they wearing? Long pants and it's I, the same thing i go back to league of their own and it's funny yeah. that movie is in the 1940s or that movie's reflecting a reality from the 1940s where they wanted pretty girls in skirts that weren't too masculine and all of that stuff is still freaking yeah. true poor marla hooch Mar- <laughs> but she was so good but that's but still that's the, true i raised her like a son Right? That's what her father said. Don't punish her because I raised her like a boy. But it's <laughs> not. That's that's 70 years ago. I know. And we're still... That's 70 years ago that movie happened or that reality happened. And we're still having fights about what girls are wearing in the Olympics to play handball. We're not as, we're not as advanced as we think we are. S- and then to just chalk it up to there's not enough interest is a lie. There well, are, there is. We just don't just know. Outfits. We just don't know that it is an option. But my six-year-old self never knew it was an option. I just was told it didn't exist. But look at, uh, okay, so look, look at something else. You look at female uh, beach volleyball players. Guys get to wear shorts. Girls get to wear something that rides up their butt every five seconds. Right. It what? I I have no doubt that when the, those athletes, that's not their go-to uniform of choice. And we still keep having these same discussions and everybody's like, so when I looked up, you know, sexism and sexism in sport and I started looking up a lot of things and I was, I was looking at them and I got yeah. physically annoyed and I'm, I'm like, sure. I gotta, I gotta stop. And I looked at the 22 most sexist moments in sport and I would say half were all about tennis, tennis, all about tennis. So, like, you have Serena Williams being treated the way that she's been treated. Oh, she right. can't have this blow up. You have guys like McEnroe saying, oh, she'd get slaughtered if she was against men. Okay, fine. Why are you saying that? This woman is a powerhouse. Why is that? Or you have a girl winning the U.S. Open, and one of the commentators says, great, can you take a twirl for us? Right. I would hit him with my racket. Yeah. That, and that's now. 
You know, you still have all of this mentality. I don't know why so much of it's probably going on in tennis because I think that women's tennis probably gets a lot more viewership. Women's tennis is huge. A lot more viewership than other things. So there needs to be ways to what? To keep them in their place? Why do women tennis players, now it's just started, I don't know when that changed. I should have looked that up. When it changed that women's tennis players didn't need to wear skirts. I don't, is probably that, quite it's like a five this seconds is, ago yeah right? this is not a, an old thing right S- stuff like that yeah side note did you ever have you ever done any research on ski jumpers did we talk about this before um i think just casually because we talked about weird, <laughs> we were talking weird about things this? but no you were saying something about uh so ski jumping yeah. is terrifying first of all i don't understand whoever goes <laughs> i am going to launch myself off of this and what seems to be just a death wish but whatever, it's in the Winter Olympics, and you go however high and however far on skis, and forever women weren't allowed to participate because doctors would say their uterus would fall out. Doctors. Their uterus would yes. fall out. That's why they couldn't do it. Right. And it's only recently, I think in the last Winter Olympics, or two at the most ago, that women's ski jump was allowed in the Olympics. We believe doctors, you know, we, believe, that's another, <laughs> that's political, another, that's another, avenue we can go down, but, but it's amazing how we have the, the support of that kind of sexist ideology to keep women in their place. You know, initially when women were allowed to play sports, they were allowed to play feminine sports, mm-hmm. tennis, figure skating. Well, something that won't ruin their face. Uh, but then they were all basketball, you know, now we have all of these great sports, yet, yet we are still somehow trying to figure out ways to keep them in their place. Keep them quiet. Keep them quiet. Keep them pacified. Keep everybody thinking that it's not as enjoyable to watch those groups of people. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Like volleyball, take volleyball for instance. Um, watching girls volleyball is amazing. It's amazing compared to guys. It's amazing. And and so the notion that guys beach and, and girls beach somehow get sexualized the way it does. Why? Right. It's still, it's still those huge, huge questions. Um, but how do we change it? Like I look at little kids and I mean, obviously I'm a teacher And I look at little kids and then you look at what they're driven to do and they already have those concepts in their head. Well, it's what they see around them, right? So they're not going to know any different. It's, it is a big movement. Something like this is, is large, but it doesn't mean you don't, you don't attempt it. Right. There is interest. Of course there's interest. Right. But this is on, this is on like every level that you would hit you just would get bigger and bigger and bigger because after elementary is high school mm-hmm. and high school you need university level to to offer programs right and that means like i played for york university okay i went there played for their women's team we had to get our own transportation to games when the boys team had a huge bus the wow. boys also had a meal card every day they had seven dollars a day to spend on lunch seven dollars a day and our yeah, home gonna... field wasn't even on campus. We had to go to Brampton Fairgrounds to play because there was on that huge amount of land, that mini city, there they couldn't have a baseball field. For... Where did the guys practice? Uh, I think actually they had they had a baseball field somewhere else, but it was for them. Just for them. Yes. And the it's guys... a hard and it's a hardball. It's a hardball oh, yeah, field. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. a raised mound. It's grass on the right. infield. It's not like that with softball. Again, it's like it's like you have these minor differences yeah, yeah. just to ensure that they can't share facilities, just to ensure that it's different enough so we could make it subservient, just to ensure that it's not as good as or it's not as reputable as or it's not quite as baseball-esque. We had to fundraise to get our own uniforms. I'm talking university level here, dude. This is not, uh, I felt like I was playing in a grade eight, like elementary school recess league. Like this is, it was serious stuff, but it didn't feel serious. 
And then yeah. we have, I mean, and, and you look at, because some people will say, well, yeah, but you still have a lot of the same. I, I find it fascinating that we have such a, a big rugby program in Canada, mm-hmm. right? So I don't think it's played so much in high school, but I don't think guys has played because the injuries are a lot and coaches don't know what the hell they're doing. But I played rugby at York University, a Western then at York. And I mean, I don't remember the comparison because I think most people just ignore rugby anyway. Mm-hmm. But you look at what's just happened. Did you hear about the the Sevens Olympics team and what they've just gone through? Tell me. So the Sevens Olympic team um, in in Canada um, in this past year, so prior to the Olympics happening, there was a huge movement from the players, and a lot of it's still on the hush hush. I'm assuming because you know just because of different legal scenarios, in which their head coach had to resign. And the players got together and whether it was suing or bringing a, a, a case against the way that the structure worked and how um, it was based in bullying and subordinating and men running the show and keeping women in their place. Now, again, I haven't read. It's very hard because a lot of it is cut out. But that's going on right now. It's everywhere. Right? That's going yeah. that's going on right this minute. Like not yesterday, not ten minutes ago. And on that note, just give me two seconds. We're gonna regroup. I feel a blood pressure problem. Yeah. Just, uh, drink Maybe you're a little tea. angry. Angry. You're allowed I feel to be angry. angry. Yeah. All right, give us two seconds. All right, I've taken a minute. I've had a slurpee of a Coke Slurpee. And now we're gonna we're gonna bring it back down to something that I never knew, to be honest, until today. And it's a very interesting fact. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Bring it. So in 1931, a 17-year-old girl named Jackie Mitchell struck out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in an exhibition game. Like, how is it? Mind nobody... you, Babe Ruth was like a like a strikeout king. So sure, fine, it's either whatever. a home run or a strikeout. But yeah. who cares? Yeah, but and fact... Lou Gehrig, both of them, both of them having an off day. Right. Or was this girl 17? 17. But it's but you're assuming for a strikeout that. Each pitch is heat, right? Each when you think strikeout mm, and an effective yeah, yeah, pitcher, yeah. ninety nine. No, we're talking like some crazy knuckleball movement, any Sliders, type of junk ball, and that's yeah. what baseball is: is is you're you're playing a mind game of what they're anticipating, what you're actually going to throw. So baseball as a sport is very different. It's very different than just speed and just power, just strength, and just strength. It's not. It's not Size. that because you and I can agree mm-hmm. to disagree on certain things you, you very much feel that maybe men and women can't play in the same league where i'm more torn about it i'm not sure but i don't, I, I don't well, i'm not don't sure know. but what i am sure about and everybody knows this we can look at a baseball team and not see the height of athleticism yeah they're not perfect adonis figures it's a lot of dad base- bods it's a lot, a lot of, dad of dad bods going which is yeah. fine but I'm just saying... If but also we... not just like athletic... Like we're talking like there's some Dungeons and Dragons stars on baseball teams. Like we're talking like... Like, you know when you see a pitcher <laughs> and they've got like... Dra- yeah, you know. Like there's a lot of losers who play baseball. Like let's be <laughs> honest here. Like, you know, with like they're like pirate like little like mustaches and their monocles. Like we're weirdos. Yeah, yeah. It's a collective of... of oddballs in a way and i'm wondering if it's the skill set sure there's speed in baseball 100 percent, but we all know those players who are never stealing second because they can't or they hit the ball yard like forever away and they'll only get to first they're barely rounding first base you know what it reminds me of i'm having a money ball moment oh i love money ball i know we all movie. love Moneyball. Remember on our birthday, or it was my birthday. You're like my birthday. Your birthday. We I think it was probably. It. I think we watched it both days. days. Yeah. I'm like all I want to do is watch Moneyball. Watch Moneyball. Um, yeah. Here's the interesting part about Moneyball. That team was put together. The Oakland A's. If anyone hasn't seen the movie, please Great run right out. But it was put together not by superstars. It was put together uh, by a statistician who said, "Who is just getting on base?" Small ball. Small ball, and. Whether or not you want women in sport and you think we could be playing in the NFL or any of those sports, baseball, could that not be a... Like, if you are if you don't think women are going to be cranking out the home runs, who cares? But what if there was a women, a group of women, a whole bunch of women who learned how to play small ball and were those players and played with the boys? Why? 
Because when they get hit in the face, our bones are going to crack more. Or maybe when they're going back to the dugout, their male coach slaps their ass and that's a problem. Like some kind of like harassment lawsuit. Is that no. what the problem is here? Bum <laughs> like, slapping. Come on. <laughs> I don't like to see bum slapping stop altogether, actually. No, but and the, and what I'm saying is, and, and a lot of people are going to be like, it never, it just never happens. It never happens because we stop them from even trying. How are we ever going to know if they were capable? We made them play a different sport from the hop, right? That's exactly what's been done all this time. And maybe this is the sport where they could have played. They could have. Where they could have just played had we not made such a hard line division. Like I played rugby. I am tiny. I got my butt kicked, handed to me. But I'm telling you guys, if half of the girls that I play rugby with had any baseball skill, I'm not too team. worried about them playing with the boys. No. I'm not. I'd buy a jersey. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you have 17-year-olds like that pitching. I mean, it, that's the one yeah. position, too, that I'd be the most, pitching and catching, I'd be the most he- hesitant by because of the flat-out strength. But you're right. There are pitchers that have built careers on knuckleballs and sliders and curveballs and well, risers. Like, I just went to a Jays game where they completely blew up the dugout. They had no pitching left. Or the bullpen, apologies. Yeah. And they literally turned to their like back backup shortstop to pitch. And he was pitching like 60, 70 miles an there hour. Law ball. Like what? Not to say that a woman would throw that. Like women can throw. I think one girl was throwing like 85. I can throw like, 60. You know, okay, man. So like, if I can throw with nothing, what happens when you work out? Right? What or, happens? Or train. You're trained <laughs> or taught how to throw a pitch or given handed some of the best coaches. What about that? What about, you know, when you said that you, you, you know, you went up against a, a overhand pitcher and was yeah. like blown away, but you're blown away. I'm wondering if it's because your entire life you've never been given, you've never been trained there. So you've never stood in that box and taken that fastball. Right. Whereas... If women were, if they grew up that way, how do we know they can't stand in? We've taken it away altogether. I don't know the end. I don't. I don't. It's not like I'm like, they will totally will be 50% of the team. I have no idea. But what I'm pretty confident of saying is we've ensured that we've limited all possibility of great players giving it a go. So in saying that, is baseball sexist? 100%. Shit. The world's sexist, guys. Breaks my heart. It is. It is, it and it doesn't sad. mean it's not getting better. I know, but the fact is, is that you're talking about it, and that's important. And that was our pitch for changing the world, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out, Lou. I loved it. Let's do it again soon. Let's do it again. I think next time we'll tackle maybe some major political, historical issues. I'm ready. We can solve those next yeah, week. I like that. Fantastic. I'm in. See you next Tuesday, guys. Dismissed.